So today I'm going to explain the basics of how to interpret Venus and Leo, and we'll use three example charts to illustrate this. Whitney Houston, George W. Bush, and Coco Chanel. So to get started, when you think about Venus in Leo, the first thing that will come to mind is the root of the root symbolism of Venus versus the root symbolism of Leo. Leo is about masculinity and Venus is about femininity. This will be similar to how Venus worked in Aries. And if you go back and watch that video, you'll see it's not exactly a terrible clash because femininity and masculinity also kind of link. So similar to Venus and Aries, one of the things we expect to arise from Venus and Leo as a result of the male-female dynamic between the planet and the sign is that the person will probably be very aggressive or outgoing or unshy about their sexuality, especially if they're women. That's one thing. Another thing is you get masculinity giving decisiveness and like a ability to assume authority. And then you get femininity gives beauty, right? So it has to do with arts. So this combination of masculinity, femininity, that's with Venus and Leo, uh, tends to indicate artistic authority. Or as the classics put it, the person becomes powerful in female areas. They become powerful in female topics. And one more thing that um, should be considered when you're thinking about this dynamic of Venus being femininity and Leo being masculinity is the environment of Leo, the fiery masculine environment of Leo takes the reproductive fluids and fertility of Venus and dries them out. So what you expect as a result of this is reduced fertility. As the classics say, they have people with Venus in Leo have fewer sons, they say, which may mean no males, or it may mean um, fewer children overall. So the next thing I'd like you to consider is that Venus is the planet of harmony, right? because femininity is about love. Love is about unity. Or unity involves harmony or partnership, marriage. So Venus is partnershipy. Leo is about masculinity, so masculinity is about power and self-strength, self-reliance, self-sufficiency. So again, there's this clashy dynamic between the planets signifying marriage and partnership and the signs signifying individuality and independence. And so as a result, you expect a Venus in Leo person is usually highly independent or autonomous. And this goes along with them having fewer children. Right? So they may feel no need for marriage. They might not feel um, interested in partnerships in general. More of a leader figure. When they do get into relationships, it's likely that they're the dominant partner. And the third thing about this clash between Venus being a uh, partnership and Leo being individuality Leo is like loyalty, power, masculinity, right? Royalty, the king. So what you get is Venus, the planet of love, goes into the environment of royalty and king. So you get like a royalization of the partner that you do commit to. So there'll be like an idealization or an idolization of the, par the partner that you have or of sexuality in general. And so actually, although Venus and Leo people are reluctant to enter relationships and prefer their individuality and their space, they tend to be reliable partners when they do finally commit to a relationship or enter into the relationship because they value loyalty. So they tend to commit more wholeheartedly than most. A third dynamic between Venus and Leo is that Venus is the planet of beauty and Leo is the sign of charisma, really, like that kind of personal power that uh, inspires confidence and creates followers. So you got the sign of charisma and the planet of beauty, they come together. What do you expect? 
the person is probably good looking or more more specifically they like to be looked at they like to be seen they have a capacity or an appetite for fame they have charisma they can go into leadership positions they're not a very followy type of person they might not really be the most compliant type of person in most circumstances so now let's look at three examples of venus in leo the reason why i have these three examples whitney houston coco chanel and george w bush is because i just looked up who are celebrities with venus and leo and these are the first three that i found that had birth certificate sourced uh, birth data so very reliable birth data the difference between these three the, pr the main difference between these three people is in their ascendant so whitney houston's venus is the eighth lord and that means that it's in the sixth house coco chanel it's the eleventh lord so that means that it's in the ninth house and george w bush it's the third lord a masculine lord and it's he's a male chart and it's in the first house that's the primary difference between the three that's why they're not quite exactly the same when it comes to the actual outcome so let's look first at whitney here you can see her chart venus and leo as the eighth lord in the sixth house we said we expect venus and Leo people to be brave or expressive about sexuality is she pretty much she's a singer right so she's going to get a check for that is she an artistic authority that for sure she's one of the most authoritative singers ever does she have reduced fertility which means few sons or children well, she only had a daughter the child wasn't really raised very very well is she an autonomous person she's a famous diva type right um independent yeah she she went out and she did it she followed her dream now this thing dominance in relationships or difficulty in partnership her, she's famous for a very difficult relationship involving this dominance submissiveness um dynamic but even more so than that how she idolized and royalized her husband and dedicated to him in spite of what he was doing to her life so for this next bit about the idealization or idolization on dedication to the sexual partner or the romantic partner she gets a lot of, she really matches this why so much does she match this one um, because it's the eighth lord house of sexuality and then for the final thing about beauty and charisma is she a type of person that likes to be seen does she have a big capacity for fame of course now here's a person who's probably significantly different right this is george w bush well one thing this is a male chart so there's a difference with a male chart in how these things manifest but just purely astrologically now we're dealing with the third lord all right so is he brave or expressive about sexuality well this is kind of a question mark but if you change the word sexuality to oh, like just desire to enjoy life it probably starts to be less of a question mark and more of a check mark why not very sexual person it's mostly on, on my mind that it's the, in the context of this chart is the first lord is in the 12th house with saturn is he an artistic authority actually i was very surprised when i looked it up he's a pretty good oil painter and he's pretty famous as an oil painter so yeah he gets a check for that is it does he have reduced fertility actually also i looked this up and i was surprised also to find that they had they couldn't conceive children for a while and then all of a sudden they conceived twin girls and then no more no further children so he does match few sons and few children is he like an autonomous independent type of person yeah he's a leader he's became the president of the united states that's what we're talking about did he have dominance in relationships difficulty in partnerships this is a yes and a no he didn't really have difficulty in partnerships and relationships he was pretty good at making relationships but he's always the main the main figure for the next thing like idolization or idealization of the spouse or the sexual partner he's a big match for this 
he really looked up to his wife and credited her for uh, improving his life very open, openly and vocally, and he's very monogamously inclined towards her. And for the last thing, need to be seen, capacity for fame, yeah, he wanted to be the President of the United States. It's a little less than a Whitney Houston type of more like, oh, wow, that's an exact match. And it's probably primarily because it's, this Venus is the third lord, and this chart has the context of having the first lord in a 12th house, which is a shyer place. And so finally, let's look at Coco Chanel. Here in this chart, Venus is the 11th lord. 11th lord because that's the Mool and Tricona sign. The male sign is Libra, and that's the 11th house. So that's all about f fashion, entertainment. So is she brave and expressive about sexuality? Super. Definitely one check at least. Just don't forget she's from the late 1800s is her birth. So she's breaking molds about sexuality just by being a female entrepreneur. She's breaking molds by designing fashion that doesn't involve corsets. M moving women into clothing that's more comfortable because you're a person, you're not a doll. Artistic authority, definitely. Uh, very powerful in female topics. Very powerful in fashion. Reduced fertility, few sons, full children, bang, no children. Autonomous and independent, super, very much. Dominance in relationships, difficulty in partnerships, no marriage. Very dominant type of person, so a lot of checks there. Idealization of sexuality, dedication to sexual partner, maybe. And then, this, the, again, the last thing, beauty and charisma, the need to be seen, capacity for fame, which is fashion designer and becomes famous, so for sure. Now what we do in these videos with the planets and the signs is I show you a consistent technique that you can use for any planet and any sign. And the technique is very simple. You look for where the planet symbolizes something that's very, very similar to what the sign symbolizes. And once you find that, you assess whether or not the planet and the sign are harmonious about that thing or whether they're antithetical about that thing. The dissonant resonance reveals what's complex or difficult for the native. The harmonious resonance, on the other hand, indicates what's easy, what comes natural, what's an inherent strength for the native. What I'm teaching you really is the method of how to do astrological interpretation by going down into the engine of the symbolism and comparing the parts. The actual interpretation that you should give is going to be individualized per the individual chart. So if you have person A with the moon in Scorpio and person B with the moon in Scorpio, it's not going to be exactly the same interpretation. Because person B's moon might have an aspect from something and person A's moon doesn't, etc., 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 etc. But what I'm showing you in the videos is the backbone of what a planet and a sign symbolizes. And if, once you understand that backbone, you modify it based on the circumstances, the extraneous circumstances that are affecting it in an individual chart. So I hope you really like this system, not just this one video, but all the videos that we do on the planets and the signs. We'll do them all. And I hope you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of those. And I hope to see you around soon. Thank you.